go paddling. Morning Top Shaggers, how are we? Welcome back to another video. As you can see, I'm out on the river today. I'm just out on a little solo kayak camp. I'm on the river Little Ooze and I've paddled the stretch quite a few times before. Never in the kayak though. I've always been in the canoe or on a paddle board. So I've just come out solo and I'm heading up the river towards Stepford. I'm gonna try and find a little nice hammock spot. I brought the hammock back out with me again this week. Um, this is the river that I dropped my camera on. Don't know if any of you saw that video um, where I camped in the little tunnel. I'm gonna pass that in a little bit and um, I'm just gonna keep paddling. It's nice and early, it's still only about half 10. So I'm gonna try and get as far to Thetford as I can and just see what's about there. And um, yeah, just uh, wing it really. So thanks for joining me again and let's have a nice little paddle. The River Little Ouse is a river in the east of England, a tributary of the River Great Ouse. For much of its length it defines the boundary between Norfolk and Suffolk. It rises in Thelnefum, close to the source of the River Waveney which flows eastwards while the Little Ouse flows west. Rising near the road between South Lopham to Redgrave, the fledgling Little Ouse is joined by a stream flowing northwards from the hamlets of Rickenhall and Bottesdale before passing through Hinderclay Fen. The river continues through country parks and villages before cutting through the town of Thetford and on to Brandon. Its mouth is in Brandon Creek in Littleport where it joins the Great Ooze. Just be aware if you come here, this stretch is slightly overgrown at the minute, which has made these channels around it and it's picked up the current pace quite a bit. Nothing to worry about, but if you're on a paddle board or anything, with your uh, main tail fin at the back there, can drag all this stuff along a little bit. Genius marketing right there for paddlers. You've got a campsite here, and then it's kind of like a little stall. I've just got like a gazebo thing set up, selling beers and wine. Nice little side hustle. Well, it's taken me about 15 minutes to get, I don't know, less than 100 meters because it's so overgrown and to paddle on the left hand side it just keeps getting caught in all of this and if you pull too hard it tips the boat to the left. I've had a couple of close calls but so far so good there is a little passage on the right hand side there so it is passable I just hope this doesn't go on like this the whole way otherwise it's not going to be very pleasant So I've got a little bit of an arm pump going on there. This is my favourite bit of this paddle because you've got the really tall poplars on either side of the river and then it just looks very green and overgrown and just, you could be anywhere here and we're about three miles outside of a town so it's really cool, loads of swans over there Go on the boys Couldn't really be more peaceful out here at the minute Got the birds singing There's the footbridge in the far distance, and then the tunnel is just up there on the right. Let's go and have a look, shall we? Looks a little different to last time I was here. It's a little bit boggy under here now. It was never that boggy before. It's a little less overgrown. Seems a bit more open on this side. But I think a lot of people know about this spot because there's a footbridge just over there. And then there's a track that comes down the back through the woods. A few people have been here. Yeah, nice to come back and revisit it. Moving on. Shout out to Tinks. I just bumped into a lad called Tinks who I first met on this river last year. And uh, he's the one that told me about the little tunnel spot that we saw earlier. 
and I've just bumped into him and his missus Bonnie, alright Bonnie? And their dog, he just shouted over, is that East Anglian Bushcraft? <laughs> we had a quick 15 minute chat, so nice one mate, nice bump into ya. Weather is good, still a little bit warm, we keep getting some gusts of wind which has actually been quite nice. I've just passed Thetford Power Station, I'm not too far from Thetford Town. I think this is the furthest that I've ever paddled in the canoe. So we're breaking new grounds as of now. Dun dun dun! But yeah, absolutely loving today. It's always nice getting out on a floating craft of some sort. I was supposed to be in Birmingham today seeing a lad called Chris who I met at the community camp. We've been chatting for a while. I was going to go visit him on his narrow boat, but funds did not allow, hence why I'm on a local camp. I've got some chilli ingredients to cook up tonight though, which I'm pretty buzzing about. I think I've only done one chilli on the channel before. Not that it matters to you, but yeah. <laughs> Do well. Looks like this used to be an old bridge here as well. Getting ever closer to Thetford. To be honest, I'm not sure what the plan is. I don't know whether I'm just going to hit Thetford. I don't even know if you have to portage or anything to carry on because the river then splits into the Little Ouse and the River Thet. I've paddled the River Thet a couple of times, once with Bellows actually. Um, so I don't know about the link or how it works out. So I'm going to go check it out, see what happens regardless. There's loads of spots this way that if I need to turn around, that'll be fine. I can just come back this way and sling the hammock somewhere. We're right out in the sticks here, like Thetford and East Anglia. There's so many good places to wild camp. We are very lucky. Um, I've traveled quite a lot of the country and I can see how hard it is for some people with the local wild camping spots and that because there's just small pockets of woodland everywhere, isn't there? Um, so yeah, we're definitely very lucky around here. And I do not take it for granted. The gatekeepers of the river. Please do not chase me. Who's been chased down by a swan on the river? Because uh, the last kayak camp I was on, one waited until I'd got past his missus and the nest. And, um, no, stay away. And, um, yeah, he let me go a little bit and he just stared at me and then he hossed himself so fast and skidded right close towards me. I had to lift my paddle up and shout and he got probably two arm lengths away before he just stopped and like started rearing up and opening his wings and I was just thinking, please do not bite me because they're, uh, they're meant to be pretty nasty, the old swan bites, aren't they? Who's been bit by a swan? This guy's just doing laps, I don't think he's sure yet. I've backed off a bit because he really was not happy Every time I started going to the right hand side, which is the only passable route down there, he started swimming towards me all puffed up. And um, yeah, he definitely didn't want me there. And it's no, uh, it's no joke, the swans. You're better off just waiting until they've found a wider bit of river or they've gone back onto the riverbank. It's not worth fighting through because they don't like us. We're in their home. You're better off just leaving them for a little bit just to settle down and um, find a way back in a bit. They're dominating both sides of the river. <laughs> Come on guys, I just want to get through. I promise I don't mean no harm. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Honestly, he's just chased me. Whew, a good like 150 meters back down the river and he just won't stop in. Oh, I've had him bolt at me before and it's scary, man. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, Honestly, I'll say it again, like anyone that's been chased by a swan, it ain't pleasant, man. And now I don't even want to paddle back up there. I just don't want to keep going forward. What am I going to do? Is this embarrassing or I've never had this. I've been chased by swans, but I've never had like a standoff where I just couldn't pass. I've tried to pass him like five or six times with good five minute intervals and it's just not happening. <laughs> what? Oh, somebody help! I don't know what to do, man. I might just find somewhere to get out, chill for an hour, and then go again. He must have just had enough, and he was like, no, mate, you're either gonna fight me or you're out of here. <laughs> New phobia unlocked, swans. <laughs> Oh, I'm not, honestly, right, I promise, hand on heart, I'm not scared of swans. I'm actually not. 
I've just never been in that situation with two before. But uh, yeah, this is new stretch for me. Like I say, I've never paddled this far up here before, but I'm honestly, I don't know what to do right now. And I don't know whether I should be embarrassed or not. Probably, I don't know. <laughs> like, do I just go for it? Guarantee, if I just go for it, he is coming for me. And I am coming out of this kayak. Definitely, 100%, I'm coming out of this kayak. I tried to raise my paddle again. I tried to make myself big, a splash of water. Uh, I tried to raise my voice at him. And he is just not having any of it. And that's why, in the end, he was like, get out of here, mate. Just go. So I have with my little tail between my legs. Right gang, I've tried two more times. They must have a signet or a couple of signets up there or something because it's not happening. But I've took my boat out. Sorry, I'm still a bit out of breath. <sighs> I've took the boat out of the water. I've gone on a quick recce and we're gonna take this L and turn it into a W because there's nothing round here, and there is a big pine plantation just over there, literally 200 meters maybe. So I'm gonna leave the boat here. I'm gonna hide the paddle somewhere else. So if someone finds the boat, obviously the paddle's not with it. And then I'm just gonna grab my kit and go and find somewhere to camp over there. Plenty of firewood, usual pine forest plantation sort of wood, so nothing new, however, it just means, oh, I can't, oh, this is funny. It just means, like, we're, we're squared. Um, but I'm not wasting the rest of the day just waiting. I'd rather get on with some wood prep and get myself sorted out and have something to eat and a beer and that. So, um, yeah, all is well. <laughs> I've been thinking as well today as I've been paddling. The um, kayak doesn't really offer me many filming angles when I'm paddling. There's two rod holders here and there's some threaded inserts up the top here. So I think I'm gonna to go to work and make something, just fab something up, get some right size tube that can connect to my camera, which will be fixed in there. Then I can have the camera facing me and the front of the boat, even get a little mount with a suction pad for the front. I could do with a GoPro as well. I should probably save for one of them just so I can kind of leave that on the boat and get some different angles. But yeah, that's the uh, difference between being in the canoe because I can set my tripod up in the canoe and like face it at me and stuff, but just something I've been thinking. It's quite hard to film a kayak video when it's quite a small boat and there's not a lot of options. I know there's um, tripods and mounts and other little bits and bobs and attachments and that you can get for them, but uh, I work in an engineering workshop, so I think I might just fab up something of my own. Anyway, just thinking out loud here. <laughs> I just want to bring you guys some better videos as well, some better uh, angles and stuff. But yes, right, I'm gonna unpack both hulls, get all my food and everything together, and then we'll push out and find somewhere to sling this hammock. There's about six red deer over there, just bolting through the trees. They were all stood there, already clocked me, all just stood there still. And I looked up and they were just there. Give me a couple of seconds and then they bolted off. There you go, pretty standard wood. It's kind of open, this one. There's loads of little divots in the ground. So I might end up trying to find a little divot. Basically, there's a footpath just there and it runs the whole length down. And I've come from that direction, river's over there. Got my bag, a bag of crisps and a beer. Left the rest of the food up at the, uh, at the yak. So I'm just having a little scout around this wood just to see if there's any actually decent spots that I can get out of view. So here's as good a spot as any. It is just your standard pine plantation. A couple of tracks dotted about and stuff, but I've come to somewhere that's got a couple of nice divots so I can have a nice fire. Plenty of trees to choose from to sling my hammock. It's like copy and paste these woods. But uh, yeah, all is well, not too far from the boat. I'm pretty happy here. I did have a look down the side of the river, but there's just so many nettles and it's overgrown and you can actually be seen from a lot of points from the track. I'm just thinking like the fire and all that. I don't know how used it is around here. We're just outside of Fetford, so I could imagine it'll probably get quite popular with dog walkers in the evening. I'm just gonna get the hammock sorted out and uh, put up and then we'll start collecting some wood, I reckon, just for tonight. It's quite a wide fire break that I'm camping in, but it was this dead fallen tree just there 
that provided me with a little bit of extra cover. I was thinking more for the fire. I've just got the hammock set up, all sorted. Got the basher on the floor there, just got my pan, my gloves, candle, knife, and my lantern up there. Same setup as last week, basher on the floor. There's all these lower limbs here. You can pretty much run your fire in pine on these lower limbs all night, but you're constantly chucking them on. You could deal him all these. It wouldn't look very pretty, obviously. Um, you'd want to space it out a bit, but I want to go and find a dead stand in just so we've got some nice chunky bits that uh, will make the fire less maintenance, you know what I mean? The dead fallen right there, but obviously dead fallen on the ground, you want to leave that as least priority just because it's going to be a bit mouldy, it'll be a bit damp. You want the trees that are still stood up, they'll see a perfect one over there. Let's go. Well, I've pushed this little peach down, which was stuck in that tree there. So I'm just going to delimit before I carry it back to camp. It's just easier that way. It stops again snagged on things. And I don't plan on using all the spindly little bits because there's so many of them near me. So they just go to waste. So I'll just clean it up, de delimit a bit. Nice and dry this one. Sweet. Let's go. I might as well bring you with me. Shoo. Just on a fat wood check. Might as well while we're in the pine. Some trees just seem to be better than others. Like this one. Yeah, we're good, we are good. Fire's getting lit tonight. What's that, third or fourth branch? You'd see some silver birch over there, falling over with some real nice bark on it. So I might go and collect some of that later on. But for now, I'm just going to clean these up as not to dirty my pan. And uh, yeah, get some curls and some uh, back scrapes and that. You know the drill by now. And if you don't know about fatwood, it's just the solid resin on pine trees. Close to the trunk, it's gone solid on dead branches. It's water submersible, you can still light your fire if you soak the whole branch in water, which is pretty cool, let's be honest. It's like a fire lighter that never fails. And you can always get your fire going with it really easy because it's resinous, highly flammable. This is more for those of you that are newer to the channel. Why change what ain't broken, isn't it? Guaranteed every time. And there's just an abundance of it where I go camping, it's hard not to just use it as the go-to, do you know what I mean? Thanks to everyone that came to the community camp in Scarborough last weekend, by the way. Really, really great to meet you all. Thanks to Henry for letting us use the wood, putting it all on, and all the lads that went down a few days before doing a bit of strimming, clearing, Daz for being on the door all day, Simon, Dave, and uh, everyone that came. It was really awesome to meet you. I had a banging weekend. It was a really nice time. Didn't film anything for the rest of you guys, unfortunately, I'm sorry. But yeah, it was a pretty chilled weekend, loads of new faces, which is cool. It just seems to attract the right people, you know, the right vibe, so... Dead chill, no expectation. Um, just hoping that we all get along. And it it's just always works out well, I've never had a bad one yet, so... Yeah, thanks again, everyone. Yeah, this bit's better for the uh, back of the knife scraping. Definitely. Well, I reckon we're going to have a look at getting some of this birch bark now, just because I can lay it down on my wood then, before I put all the uh, shavings and all the curls and that down. And I did see it over here somewhere. Wee! Beers wise, by the way, I'm just on the Stella tonight. Oi, oi, lock up your wives and daughters. <laughs> That's about it. Not much else to tell you. As far as she goes,
you know sometimes when you just can't really be bothered and you just try and light your fire anyway, that's when it always bites you in the backside. It's really worth putting the graft in and uh, you'll be sweet from the off. I think that might come with experience as well though. You kind of learn how fires really work the more you light them and you know when you can get away with doing minimum prep and you know when it's probably going to come back and bite you but it's normally when it's late, you're tired and you think you're going to get away with it and you don't. <laughs> Do you know when the weather just feels like it's going to rain? It's a little bit how's it going at the minute. But I really don't want to put this basher up. I want to be able to sit on this and chill. I'm going to stand by that it's not going to rain. Hold me to that. Because <laughs> you watch in the middle of the night, I'll be putting this basher up and it'll be pissing it down. Not after a big fire tonight. It's only a little fire pit. I just want to be able to cook, light up the setup a little bit, and uh, everybody knows the camping vibe is the campfire. Maybe that's why I'm not so attracted to doing hills as much. I know that I live in the flatlands, I've got the forest on my doorstep, maybe naturally I'm going to be more into that. I think maybe if I lived in like the lakes or near my parents in North Yorkshire, County Durham, or the peaks or something, I might be more drawn to the hills. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love visiting the hills and like, I really get touristy like in awe when I go to the hills or the mountains or whatever. Um, but it's the campfire for me. The views are mint on the hills and that, but it's the campfire which brings the vibe for me. I enjoy grafting for wood. I enjoy cutting it, processing it, splitting it, all of that, you know, putting the hours in for a good night, I enjoy that. And same with cooking fresh. I enjoy cooking with fresh ingredients, you know, yeah, it weighs more and all of that, which doesn't really matter if you're on a boat, if you're in a kayak or whatever, you are limited to what you can bring. But um, no, nah, this is what I'm drawn to. I love the woods, I love the fire, I love the cooking. Um, boiling the bags, come on, they're just not as good, are they? Time and a place, for sure. But in my personal opinion, the woods is not it. That's the time for cooking fresh and cooking good and thriving, you know? The content can get samey because I go to the woods a lot. I do try and mix it up with the boat and the canoe and the odd stealth one or, you know, I try and bring a bit of a variety to the channel, but that's what I end up in the woods because it's what I love. I've always said it, I don't go out to make content. I try and mix it up for you. I love camping in all forms, however it is. Um, but I do want to get doing a bit more hill whinging. It's just the travel, isn't it? It's just the travel, the money. Car's got no MOT at the minute. I've only got the van and he is a thirsty beast. 200 quid Scarborough and back. 100 quid there, 100 quid back. It's not cheap, is it? What's that like 15 miles to the gallon? Nah, it's probably not that bad, but it ain't great, that's for sure. I'm still laughing about them swans, you know. It's funny, isn't it? Because at any point, Mother Nature can just be like, nope. Not just with the weather, but like the river, it's so narrow and it was so overgrown in the middle. Yeah, of course, I probably could have just paddled on and got nipped a couple of times or whatever and carried on, but it's almost fun. It's almost funny to... It's almost funny that that's happened and it's turned into something awesome, to be honest. Like, them swans are giving me a bit of ag. I've decided, nope, I'm just gonna get out of the boat. Look at where we've ended up, in a lovely spot. So it's almost like I could see it as one of the swans being like, mate, no, you're not going this way. Go camp up there, it's wicked. And he's not wrong, if that's what he was saying. It's not wrong, he probably weren't saying that. He definitely weren't saying that, but he's not wrong. I've had a couple of Stellas now, so I can't even think about what I was going to say. Anyway, Mother Nature's funny. River pigeons are cool. Campfires are even cooler. Hammocks are pretty wicked. <clears throat> I wanted to bring out the hammock again. I had such a good camp in the hammock on the last video that it's just spurred me on to want to bring it back out. 
and I've got the DD like whoopee slings and the whatever fastening system it's called it just means you can tension it um, you put the tree huggers around the tree on each side clip on your whoopee slings and you basically just pull it to get tighter pull it to get looser terrible review great bit of kit If any of you do go camping in like a pine forest and you want a nice clean burning fire, it's pretty smokeless here. It's worth taking off all the bark of uh, all the lower limbs because I've been burning pretty much just lower limbs uh, so far. I've got a couple of trees behind the camera and all that. But if you just pick off the bark, some of it comes off real nice. You can almost grab it and just like de-skin it. And that just helps stop a lot of the smoke from wafting into like the footpaths and all that. Come back for uh, more smoke fire tips with me, your host, East Anglian Bellwhacker. I'm just gonna add a couple more branches to this, wait for it to simmer down, and then jobs are good and let. Terrible skills. A wise man once told me there's no such thing as too many onions, so. That's what we're rolling with. Don't want the moss in there though. Do you know, have you ever read like a recipe book or just like um, a recipe online or something and it will tell you to use like two cloves of garlic? No such thing as two cloves, mate. Minimum of a bulb. What's your chilli tips? Who's got some tips for like a banging chilli? Because chilli's one of my favourite meals. I'm not great at cooking it, like I can do a bog standard chilli, but if anyone's got any secrets, like oddball things to add that like people might not know, or anything like that, stick it down below. I just need to turn up the hob a little bit, I reckon. I've just chucked the rice in there now, and uh, it's thickening out quite nice. I don't consider myself like a good cook by any means, and I cook better in the woods than I do at home, to be honest. Like, it's just too easy to chuck stuff in the oven at home, isn't it? That is smelling and looking so good. It's looking a little bit red, but there's quite a few red ingredients, aren't there? That is banging! It's easy for me, I could just sit here and tell you it's the best chilli in the world and it could be dog turd. But nah, it really is good, I promise. Right then gang, I've traversed to the hammock. It still looks quite light out there, but it's not. It's getting on for 10 o'clock now and I am shattered. I don't know if I'm still tired from the weekend or all that swan excitement's taken it out of me. <laughs> but um, I'm in the hammock, I'm gonna zip myself in and listen to a couple of tunes and then probably drift off with them. And then hopefully it doesn't rain tonight, fingers crossed. If it does, you'll see me scrambling my basher together. If not, I'll catch you in the morning. Have a good one. Shee! Good morning, campers. Before I pack up, I kind of just wanted to go through some of my kit with you that I take when I'm out on the kayak. Obviously, you're quite limited on the boat to what you can take. Um, I normally mix my kit up each week for whatever type of camp I'm doing. And this has kind of become what I tend to always take on the boat now. I mean, the hammock and the sleeping system, that can change. Sometimes I just bring a tarp. Um, and no hammock but so for this case I've got sleeping bag, bivy bag, hammock, basher in case I needed to chuck that up. I've got my speaker which doubles up as a lantern, a candle, citronella candle which I didn't even light last night, my knife self-explanatory, the saw, 
wood processing wise, I probably could have got away with not bringing this. However, I'll always bring my saw because if you're out on the river and there's a fallen tree in front of you or some branches you need to get past, worth having a saw even if you don't use it for your wood processing. Like I say, in a pine forest like this, you can get away with just the axe. But then again, if you're not in a pine forest and you've got a saw and a knife, do you need the axe? I still like to bring the axe because if it's smashing it down with rain all day and then you get to camp, you can uh, split your wood down to the dry centre with this. I mean, you could batten it with your knife, but it's not a big bit of kit. I've got room for it. I like to bring it. I've got my skillet, my spork, some oil for the pan, some coffee, press. You could sack off the press if you just brought instant coffee, but you know, I like to have nice coffee in the morning when I'm camping, just makes you feel good in the morning. So that's why I bring the press, obviously the mug to go with it. I'll bring my bush box because a lot of the times I camp places where I couldn't really get away with having an open fire. So I like to bring the bush box and then I've got my fire lighting kit, just a mixture in there. I've got a ferrocerium rod, got flint and steel. Um, I've got a couple of bits of fat wood that I put in there from yesterday. My head torch, gloves, and a 45 litre day sack. And that is it. That is everything I've brought with me, apart from the food and the beers, which my rubbish is over there. Pretty light loadout, really. Everything in here gets used, he says, apart from this candle, which I thought river, mozzies, this is citronella. I just thought I'd show you because a lot of people ask me about kit. I mean, brands and all that doesn't really matter, but. That's just what I take. Right then, time to go. Let's go see if the yak's still there. A lot of my love of nature and the outdoors comes from spending quite a bit of time with my granddad as a kid. We used to go out mushroom foraging and other wild edibles. And something he always did, which I have just done all my life now because of it, put a stick on the track. Pretty simple, you know. He used to do it to mark where he's left his mushrooms and stuff behind trees. But I always use it, especially if I'm out on the kayak. It's, if you walk away from the river, it's really easy to remember where the boat is that night. But if you have a couple of beers and you have some food and you come back in the morning, you might end up walking up and down a track for a little bit, trying to find where you left the boat. So I always just put a stick down and that's points in that direction. So I know we're straight onto it. Dead simple, but a lot of people don't think about it. There she is. Good to go. Back in the game. <laughs> They're in the exact same place. Look, he's already rearing up. I'm not gonna go past the swans because I'll be paddling up there only for the sake of about half an hour just to turn around and come back for another potential 45 minutes trying to get past. I just don't think it's that worth it. So for the sake of them two and their signets up there, I'm just gonna paddle back down the river. Wind started picking up now a little bit, but it's behind me. So it's just pushing me down the river even quicker with this current. Poplar trees are massive, aren't they? Do like a good poplar. There's a willow underneath it as well. Not so great for burning. So this power station, to get its power, they actually burn chicken poo from all the farms around here. I applied for my engineering apprenticeship there years ago and they didn't even reply. Cheers, lads. Got called anyway. Shoo. And it does stink as well. It really, really smells. What I really like about most of our local rivers is you can go like 24, 48 hours without seeing anybody else. There's no motorboats on these rivers and during the week, which is when I go camping, you never see any other paddleboarders, kayakers, canoeists, anyone like that. So you've pretty much got the river to yourself. Obviously I bumped into Tinks and his missus yesterday, but they were just out walking the dog, stood on a bridge, and they're still the only people I've seen the last 24 hours, which is mega, because it really does feel like you're out in nature, even though I've been less than two miles away from a pretty big town. But on the negative side to that, because there are no motorboats and the rivers are quite remote and not really that accessible, um, a lot of it is overgrown. So in the summer, you do have to deal with that, but it's well worth it to be out here on your own, you know?
Ah, sound as he was. Why couldn't they all be like you, Bar? See ya. I'm Lucan 5 and my dad's Bruce Lee. Drive me around and here's JCB. I'm Lucan 5 and my dad's Bruce Lee. I'm always looking for that flash of electric blue crossing the river. The old kingfishers. I haven't got one on film yet. They're so quick and they just bob from tree to tree. Morning. Don't hiss at me. Love you. Some Canadian geese up ahead. See? Sound as a pound, aren't you? Canadians, aren't they? Well polite. What a fishing is it, lad? Or just a quick drink? Oh, just a quick drink. Last one. Ah, and there we are. Back at the van. What a nice little camp that was. Lovely paddle. Couldn't have asked for better weather, really. Didn't rain. Stayed dry. Back to old Hurrell. Good to see you're still here, lad. Do you know when a vehicle is like really part of the family and I just got so much love for him. He's a 1980 VW T3, two litre air cooled. And he gets about, he's been up north a few times, been around Wales a few times, Peak District, had his engine rebuilt last year and I'm completely in love with him. Anyways, thanks for watching the video Shaggers. Peace to you, hope you have a great week. Catch you soon. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs>